the main reason why you want to do fork seals, guys. Brake pads. Brake pads, braking, stopping power. It's all about it. So, this is a normal brake pad. Newer, newer brake pad. You can see. I got the little groove in there. Whatever. <clears throat> so, here's a brake pad. And here's a brake pad that I did not clean. As you can see, the little uh, air pocket grooves that are cut. They are pretty nasty. So I cleaned this brake pad just to show, just to do this video of why you need to do um, fork seals. Because you won't have any braking power up front. These brake pads are probably saturated with fork oil. So, um, I don't know if you can clean them, but if you, uh, maybe if you stick it in a tub of brake cleaner, and maybe it'll dry it out. But anyway, to clean those little grooves, I just took a good old zip tie, and I just sat in here and cleaned it. You can use a piece of wire or something else. But anyway, that's, uh, well, I use this side. That's basically what I wanted to make this video, just to show you guys why brake pads or uh, fork seals need to be done. Because, you know, brakes, brakes and steering are your first and foremost part of any vehicle, I guess you could say. And uh, this is a... Uh, one of the reasons why you want to do it. So I made a video, so watch the video. It's coming up next, and uh, it's long, but it is what it is. So thanks for watching, and uh, here's the video. All right, guys, welcome back to Half Fast 719. I'm gonna be using some HP <clears throat> Pro Honda Fork Oil 5 weight. Believe it or not, it is 5 weight oil. Um, a lot of people think it's, um, a lot heavier oil, but it's not. This is the newer stuff, this, <clears throat> so it's 32 ounces. This is what I bought, man, a long time ago when I did my other forks. I was trying to look for a date, but anyway, this was 11 bucks a quart. And now it's like 20, 25 bucks a quart for this fork oil. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the seals that I got. These two seals here. Stick them in a little bag. And I'm going to pre-lube them. Just going to let them soak in some, uh, some of the oil. Because I don't know how old they are. I'm assuming they're... Not that old, but it's not like they don't have some date. You know, they don't have a date on them. <clears throat> but anyway, this is the paperwork right here. So you got your... Yeah, you probably won't be able to see it. But anyway, you got your dust. Your dust seal is like this. And that's how it goes. And then it shows... The other seal and the spring, the spring goes into the tube. So anyway, just going to put some of this in here. Just so it'll make the seal soft. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch the seals over this a couple times to flare it out. You know, basically just run it, run it over this a couple times, just to uh, get the seal stretched a little bit. So these are obviously not what I'm using, but anyway. So and I have a mess to deal with too. So anyway, uh, let's try to see if I can't set you on a tripod and and put everything together over here. I'll be back. Alright, <clears throat> so you're going to need rags, obviously. 
There's the fork tube. I'm going to do the side. I'm going to do the brake, brake caliper side. What I did do off camera is, it's hard to see, but I don't know if you could see kind of how it's like black right here. So it's kind of black. That's kind of like where it's worn because your, your bike's, you know, the forks are like that. And then you're compressing like this. So it's kind of like pivoting like that. So it does more wear here um, in this area. So I took uh, some 400 grit sandpaper and uh, some wet, wet sandpaper. And I sanded the whole tube down. Basically just polished it, make sure there was no nicks, scratches, or anything in it. So when the new seal is in there, um, it won't catch one of those nicks or whatever and tear the seal. So I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to try it. Got some 3 quarter inch PVC pipe. And uh, I'm going to try to fish it through with a rag. Just all the way down, kind of like a gun, to clean it, because there's a lot of junk down there. And uh, a tube probably, I was going to say the rag probably won't come out, but it is coming out. So, just want to clean, clean down in there. It's the first time doing that. I've done fork seals about three times. Um, one on the Kawasaki and then twice on my 450. Um, I did it once on my 450 because the seals were blown. Use seal sabers. They blew again. What ended up happening to mine was the, the little bushings. <clears throat> one of the bushings in here um, actually worked its way down and it came out the seal so but I don't know how that happened the little uh, washer retainer actually was was broken in there so I probably needed a whole new fork but I just bought all those parts so let me grab uh, all the parts we need <clears throat> So you got your tube, you got your, so you're going to put your dust seal on, then you're going to put this on, you're going to put your main seal on, <clears throat> main seal on, you're going to put this on, then you're going to put the bigger one on, which is that one, and then you're going to put this one on, and then this one goes in this lip. So let's, uh, let's get that dust seal, put that dust seal on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little lube in here and I'm going to put this, I'm going to call it a condom, but a seal protector. So I'm just taking fork oil, putting a little bit of brand new fork oil on the, on there. Because you just want this little condom to go past this second lip so you have a first lip here second lip there and you want it to go past I don't know if you could see that but through there you could see I'm past that second lip so like right there's the first lip and there's the second lip so grab the dust seal <coughs> So dust seal is obviously this one's going to go with the spring down because the lip goes into the tube. So you put that on and then you'll grab your little retainer ring 
and put that on. A lot of people like to flare these out and bring them over the tube, but I'm worried that when you do that, if you open them up like this and pull them off, you might scratch this tube. This tube is like really delicate, so just be careful with that thing. And then you're going to grab your seal. <coughs> quick and grab that seal and make sure you're you're putting the spring the spring side up the letter side down so you want the letter side to go down and you just want to do this pretty quick and that's it and then you can try to take that off it's gonna be a pain I'm about to get this off Might have to do this off camera. <clears throat> yeah. Oh wait. Oh wait. Oh wait. <sighs> so yeah. Let me uh, let me get that off off camera real quick, because otherwise I'll be here for two minutes. Of making noises and you guys go on a re up. Alright, got it off. So, ended up using a little tool. Stuck this little tool in here and basically pulled it up. So, yeah, got it off. <clears throat> so, the next. Next thing you need is the little is the little retainer ring and that goes flat up against that. So you got that one. I'm just I'm putting some lube on them as I go so So then we got this one, that one's going to go over everything too, sit on that one. And then we got the one that looks like a, uh, maybe like a cam bearing or a, some type of bearing. So you'll take this one and you'll see it spreads open and that goes there. Just want to make sure this is really clean, no grease, no nothing on it, or no uh, no dirt, no rocks. So we got that done. We grab the a tube. <clears throat> so we have the tube here. Just gonna lean that there and I've had these draining for I don't know two days now so they should be good yeah that one looks clean in there so this side is my brake side this is our California registration <clears throat> so it's the caliper side so I know it's that side so I'm gonna take the tube Take the tube, it goes together, that goes in there, that goes in there, without the rag, that goes there, and let me uh, set that there and go get my little slide tool. So this is a Tusk seal driver, uh, part number 109-617-0001. So that's a fork seal driver, 46 millimeter to seven, uh, 47 millimeter. <clears throat> so 
Motion Pro, I like the Motion Pro ones better, but um, this one was about $30 cheaper. That's the same junk. It's just, looks identical to the Motion Pro. So anyway, as you can see, it says 46, 47. So I'm assuming, you know, it's only one millimeter bigger. <clears throat> so it's gonna go in here. So, oh boy. What you gonna do, you open this up. Your seal down in there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So I'm putting the seal down. I'm gonna open this. Man. Come on. Open, open, open. Okay. It's so gonna take one half. Put it on there. This other half. Put it on there like that. And you're just gonna take this and you're just gonna slide it. You'll hear you'll you'll hear when it bottoms out. That's right there. It's bottomed out. So Check in there to make sure that we're all good. That that little ring can go in there. Drop this seal driver off. Kind of a pain because it's kind of like a really, really good tolerance. crap off of here anyway <clears throat> then you just take this little ring you stick that ring in there you'll need a little screwdriver or pick a little pick and just make sure it snaps into its groove and make sure it's all groovy in, it's in, and now it's in. Okay. It's going to be hard to show you, <clears throat> but see the little wavy part right down there. Wavy part up there. Just make sure it's all in. Then you take this seal, and this seal you can just put in by hand. It's not that hard. Put that seal in. Some guys will say to, to heat this outer ring up, but I don't believe in heating that outer outer up. But yeah. So that's it. So that's all there is to it. You got your dust seal and your regular seal. And what you want to look for is a a good ring around. So you just cycle it a couple times. And you just look at this ring all the way around. And as long as you don't see any little imperfections in that ring then you're good, then you know you got good seals. So anyway, let me get to uh, the next part, <clears throat> which is dropping the spring in. So these, like I said, have been, been draining for a couple days. Spring.
just cleaning them. You can tell by the notches what size spring it is. Don't ask me what they are, but this one's got two notches on it. So what I always do is do uniform. I'll put the two notches up top. Put that in there. Grab one of these. Chingalingies. Clean it. So one thing you want to do is this nut will sometimes be out. Just run this little locking nut all the way down until it bottoms out. You'll see there's still still oil in this little cartridge. This little thing slides. This is a kind of a bearing here. So I usually just bring it to an, to the end. Once you put it in on the spring, it'll come all the way up. So it doesn't really matter. So now you take this. Put this in there. I'll just thread it. You don't want to thread it too much. Just enough so that you can turn it upside down. So I do have the bleeders out. So now you'll turn it upside down. You'll push this down. You'll put a half inch wrench. Let me go grab all that junk. I'll be back again. It's almost like I should be prepared. So you got your, your, I think this one's a compression, this one might be a rebound, I can't remember which one's which, oh, so it's, that one's rebound, so this is your rebound little pin, the top one's compression. So these are the tools, you're going to need a 17, you could use a half inch or whatever, and then you're going to need a 21 millimeter socket. This oil is like really, really tacky. So, so you just want to inspect this o-ring on the bottom, make sure everything's good, make sure there's not a bunch of debris and crap in here. So this is your clicker. <clears throat> you'll take this you'll put your little chinga ding in here it's gonna fall in there it can only go one way and then uh, this <clears throat> I'll show you how quick you take the wrench like this you push this down you go under there and you're done. Then you just want to take this, line up your little clicker, and you'll hear it click as you thread it in. So what I'm going to do Keep making sure it's backed out. So, one thing you do want to do is you got to remember how many clicks you had on each, on the lower and the upper. This bike had seven clicks out. So, 
see that's as far as I can go. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm going to take the 17, clean it, and I'm going to bring it to until I hit that. Just done. I'm going to take an impact because it says that you got to tighten that down to 20-something foot-pounds. That's 20. All right. Compress it again. Take the wrench out. And I'm going to take some tension off just, just so I get it started. Cross ready again. Okay. And then this one says 50 foot pounds. There you go. 75 foot pounds. Alright, bottom's done. Other than my clicks. So I'm going to go all the way in and seven out. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Then we can come back up here. Everything should be good. Yep. Okay. You can hear air coming out, air going in. And I might have to pause because I can't remember what capacity fluid I'm supposed to have in here. I think it's 6.6 uh, .6 ounces, but let me go check and confirm. I'll be back. I got to Google. I got to Google. All right, guys. So instead of Googling it, I went to the manual. So <clears throat> since my springs have the two marks which is a stock, so no marks or two marks. You got three marks, four marks. Four marks are for really heavy people. But anyway, two marks, maximum capacity, 14.2 ounces, 420 uh, cc's. So slightly stiffer as it nears full compression. So I'm gonna put four, 14 ounces in there and then um, what I'm going to do first though, is I'm going to take <clears throat> the little cartridge apart. So I'm going to take this cartridge out and I'm going to drain it and I'm going to add 6.6 .6 ounces right there to the cartridge. So let me take that out first, let me drain that <clears throat> and 6.6 uh, .6 and then 14 ounces. So. I'll be, I'll be back. All right, and to take that apart, also I guess you will need a fork tube wrench. That's smaller. This is larger. <clears throat> You'll take a 19 millimeter, and I already cracked it loose. It wasn't that tight. And you'll just back this out. This thing doesn't explode in my face for some reason. So we're clicking, which means we're off. So, somehow, which I think I screwed up already. I think you have to take the bottom off. I could be wrong. Um, I don't know. Screw that up. So, just go super easy. Got a lot of suction. So 
So, as you can see, there's this piece. I'm going to set it right in here. Because that's going to be my little fork, fork tube tool. Let me go drain this real quick. <coughs> Actually, it doesn't look that bad. Actually, it looks really clean. So, so there should be about 0.2 ounces in here. So I'm gonna add 6.4 ounces in there. Grab the thing out of there, quick. Okay, clean it. Make sure it's all clean. Basically, this is your compression because <clears throat> it says COMP, which is your compression. I clean it pretty good. Go ahead, stick it back in there. Six point six ounces in there right now. Before I put this piece in there, so let me do that, and then uh, I'll probably just add the other oil too, and uh, tighten it up. Show you what it looks like finished, like a fork. All right. Well, I got roughly fourteen point two ounces of in there of uh fork oil i did charge this i put uh like 6.4 ounces in there so what you want to do just want to lean it over oh, stay there. lean it a little bit and pour I'm going to add a touch, touch more. That's what I just spilled. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it down. Using the wrench. Throw the wrench. Rag. Hold it. All right, guys. Camera died, but anyway, I put a uh, six hundred or uh, four hundred and ten cc's, fourteen point something ounces of 
fluid in there. So 14 ounces, which is right there. And you go across and uh, 400, just 14.2 cc's or 400 cc's, 14.2 fluid ounces. So I put 14 ounces, which brings me to about like 404 cubic cc's, whatever it's called. Anyway, I uh, ended up doing the other one here. Um, it's not tight as you can see. You still see an O-ring. Um, but I put it on just so that it's upright and it doesn't leak out. <clears throat> So I changed the brakes, the brake pads. Brake pads are pretty trashed. Um, I changed the brake pads in the rear. They weren't that bad in the rear. So new brake pads in the rear. These are the old brake pads. So they look like a stock brake pad. Nissan. Nissan. Anyway, they don't look too bad. They're not that, that badly worn. Basically that little notch right there by my thumb that means that it's it's basically time to replace them that's their little feeler but they're pretty jacked up like eaten up I don't know what would eat them like that but uh yeah those are done uh I put a bunch of the stupid accessory stuff on here um Timing mark cover, tranny side, uh, clutch side cover, um, oil, the other one, oil fill, I don't know what that one does, and then I do have this one in the anodized red with a new filter, so I'm going to wait till I fire the bike, fire the bike up and uh, warm it up, I'm going to change oil and then I'll put that one on, but the uh, front brake pads, are done, are changed. You can see stuff dripping because the uh, um, I put these seal savers. I washed them all up, and I put those fork guard seal savers on there. So anyway, um, once I get the seals, once I get the seals, I'll uh, put them in. But for the meantime, it's just going to be like this. Um, I wouldn't say this bike was neglected, but it definitely needed fork seals for a long time. So, I'm going to add a clip to the beginning of the video, and uh, that's pretty much going to be it for the fork seals. Just the fluid thing is all you missed. Did one side, it's repetitive. So, bike's pipes all smashed in. See if I can't somehow fix that. I don't know how I'd be able to fix it other than buying a new pipe. Maybe I'll buy a new head pipe, header pipe, and uh, fix it. But there was some stuff that was loose on here. The Kickstarter bolt was loose. Um, these down here were actually loose for the the pegs. I don't know why. Um, this bolt was actually backed out or nut. Um, so I kind of went over most of it with some tools, tighten stuff. I'm going to wash, pressure wash the bike after I change the oil and do everything. Um, but yeah. So anyway, um, that's going to be it for this video. Um, that's all I got. Oh, I did have to tighten the head, the headset. The headset was really loose. Um, I had, uh, about... I don't know, maybe a sixteenth, not really an eighth inch, but a sixteenth inch of play up and down in here. The headset was moving, maybe it was a little more, maybe it was an eighth inch, but I tightened it down. A little um, spanner nut right here. I just tapped it, tightened it down. Um, you can do one or two things. What I like to do when I do tighten these, um, I'll loosen these bottom triple clamps. And then when I run this down, it keeps this the same height and it pushes the fork down, down here. But anyway, 
All right. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. We'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.